Hero Factory. We build heroes. And us AFOLs, well, we build mocks. Or TFOLs, depending on how old you are if you're watching this episode. But regardless, here at the Bionicle Inspiration series, we're going to give you the tools so that you can, in fact, build your own heroes on this Hero Factory themed episode of the Bionicle, not really Bionicle Inspiration series. Because we're talking about Hero Factory today, which, you know, is Bionicle. But, haha, it's the Hero Factory Inspiration series, episode three. I think, I think this is the third Hero Factory episode I've done, so uh, let's get excited because we're going to talk about some Hero Factory mocks today, which are so closely related to their Bionicle brethren, it still fits in well with the show. So, let's begin, shall we? The first mock that we've got today is by Luna Still and is called Shinketsu. Shinketsu! So, what I love about this guy is, well, he's not technically, I mean, there's not much in the description about this uh, specific mock, so I don't actually know if it is specifically in the Hero Factory universe, but it does use a lot of Hero Factory parts. I think that's pretty cool and really noteworthy for this episode, because just because you're using very heavily CCBS Hero Factory pieces doesn't mean you have to build a Hero Factory mock, or the opposite, you could build in exclusively Bionicle pieces, but be building a Hero Factory themed character from that universe. So I think this still relates uh, quite Quite well. One of the things I like on this a lot is the head design here, simply flipping the uh, Evo head there from the Brain Attack wave of Hero Factory, and kind of using that as like this weird robot mono eye thing. It looks really cool, looks really unique, and I've never really seen those heads actually be flipped like that before and used as this sort of interesting sort of drone look or something like that. I think it looks really awesome actually. So maybe you're planning on using one of those heads in one of your upcoming mocks. Maybe you want to flip it instead of using it the actual way, or heck, maybe you've got a bunch of them just lying around in your collection. Well, here's an interesting way that you could use them in the ways that they weren't intended. And actually, be sure to do that with any mask that you have. Flip it upside down, turn it on its side, see if you could actually place it on the top as, as a head on the mock, uh, but have it be the flip side of it. Because there's actually a lot of masks that work reasonably well like that, you know. Maybe there's sort of a little pattern in it that could work as an eye, or maybe if you flip something around, it kind of actually looks like a face, or just there's an interesting pattern to it, and it could work well for a mask. It's really up to you. Just kind of play around with your pieces, see what it looks like. You never know what you might find. I also really like the little jets on the legs here. Kind of an interesting way of sort of doing some sort of jet propulsion system for this dude here. Fits well with his wings and this sort of uh, kind of like an air drone or sort of, sort of look that this guy has. I quite like it. And I also like the weapons that he has too, these sort of dual shields on both of his arms here with little blades kind of coming out on one of them there. Pretty cool. I quite like that. Just a, a, an interesting, fun looking weapon that kind of ties in nicely with the textures and look of the wings on the back of this guy. Uh, it's fitting and looks really nice. So yeah, a cool Hero Factory inspired mock using a lot of the pieces from Hero Factory sets. Let's move on to the next mock in this episode. And this is a mock by Noah Jacquees and is called Inferno Prime. Right off the bat, I love how he's reversed the shins that came on the original wave of every single uh, Hero Factory hero. Uh, I, I, was, I always thought those looked really cool, just the way that they sort of sprawled out at the bottom towards the shin there. And I think it's actually quite surprising, in my opinion, that those look just as cool flipped around the other way. It kind of actually sort of forms a bit of a, a knee uh, on the uh, the leg there, which actually looks awesome. I, again, I, I, I don't know, that really surprises me just because I always thought those pieces looked so good for the way that they were intended. But there you go, flipping it upside down, you have very much surprised me. And uh, it, yeah, it looks really good and really suits the mark and the aesthetic that uh, this guy's aiming for here, which is great. I also really like the aesthetic of taking the original wave of Hero Factory sets and buffing them out, making them a lot larger and a lot bigger, because, you know, they were quite small sets. They were basically Matoran sets, uh, if you were to compare them to the sort of scale of Bionicle. And as cool as that was, it really works to kind of buff them out. You know, a lot of the pieces that they came with were easily compatible with a sort of larger look to them. You know, those torso pieces are naturally quite large. The masks are masks, so they kind of fit with everything. And yeah, those shin pieces there can easily be used as lower leg armor and yada 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 with the rest of the pieces, you know. So kind of the majority of the parts that you got in those sets, it was pretty easy to work with them for anything else that you were attempting to do. So that there could be a, a fun little project for you. Maybe you have in fact bought uh, one of the uh, original wave of Hero Factory sets, or you just have some in your collection, or you're planning on buying one, whatever comes your way. Could just sort of upscale it to a, a cooler degree and make this, uh, you know, Ferno Prime, or maybe Stormer Prime, or Breeze Prime, depending on... Uh, you know, the look that you're aiming for, or the mocks that you've got uh, planned, or the mock that you're planning on making. Could be a fun thing to do, and relatively easy to do, depending on the amount of pieces that you've got there. It uh, could be a fun little challenge. I also love the gun that this guy has. Looks fantastic. Really, really fits with the sort of general aesthetic that this mock has. But also just the fact, too, that a lot of those pieces that came on there are 
from Hero Factory sets, and, and also some of the uh, Star Wars uh, Ultra Build sets there too. In fact, I think that gun piece is only from the Star Wars Ultra Build sets. I might be wrong there. I think I'm thinking of a different gun piece that came in some of the other Hero Factory sets. But regardless, both of those sets, whether they're the uh, CCBS Star Wars Ultra Build sets or your typical Hero Factory sets, a lot of them did actually come with gun pieces that you could uh, sort of build your own blaster around. Of You know, it was, it was sort of more kind of the general frame for a gun, and you sort of built uh, like a scope or the edges to it, and the you know, every other little part of the gun. But, uh, you know, certainly playing around with your Hero Factory pieces does give you a lot of room to, as well as a lot of pieces, to be exploring different gun designs there. So yeah, break out some of your Star Wars Ultra Build sets, some of your Hero Factory sets, and take a look at some of the guns and different pieces that they had there that were used for weapons. Because if you're a bit of a gun enthusiast yourself, it's kind of the perfect pieces to be using. So an excellent work on this Ferno revamp here. Let's move on to the next mock, which is by Dylan Neves and is called Rex Spider. So what I love so much about this mock is the simplicity of it. This mock exclusively uses pieces from Ferno, Evo, Jetbug, Breeze, and Stormer. Now I believe that would just be Ferno, Breeze, and Stormer 2.0 from the Hero Factory wave. If Ben's filling up to it, he'll put some pictures up of all of those sets. That's right, future Ben, making you do editing. <laughs> And that alone is super cool. Just the challenge of, I only have these sets, let's see what I can do just with those pieces. Honestly, what a brilliant result that uh, Dylan has made here. Such a cool concept of just making your typical old, you know, Hero Factory hero here. Combining some of the colors, of course, Breeze was green, and uh, Evo had the orange core, claw, and the headpiece there. Yeah, just sort of mixing and matching and creating a really cool hero. And I mean, that alone is just a fun thing to do, because, you know, you had a bunch of colors, and specifically Hero Factory 2.0, which debuted the CCBS sort of build style, uh, those pieces were available in so many colors and everything worked very well together you know all of the heads you could very much uh, replace with other types uh, available in that wave so it was, a, it was a perfect way of kind of mixing and matching colors and uh, making your own kind of hero there so that alone is a fun challenge but then going further with that and then giving this really awesome sort of doc ock inspired uh, tentacle things coming out of the back there what an interesting idea and really simple execution too simply just using the Hero Factory bone pieces like that to create these claws and then putting some type of actual claw on the ends of them. And then additionally, here's some of those guns we were talking about before, putting some of those on the top too. Really, really nice design, really simplistic, but just awesome to see and even cooler knowing that it had that restriction of just using a set amount of sets. And it's that, isn't it? This has such a unique concept to it because it has that cool tentacle look and the fact that this guy doesn't even need to walk on the floor because he's got these tentacles that are doing it for him. You know, you see that a little bit with Doc Ock from Marvel that, you know, he does walk exclusively using the tentacles, but there are other times that he walks with his own feet and the tentacles, you know, do other tasks and things. But I always like that variation on that design of it having being that they're always raised above the ground like this. And uh, I don't know, it kind of makes them look a little bit more sinister to some degree, especially works really well if they have much larger uh, kind of claws coming out of their back or tentacles, whatever you want to call them. So it's that thing, you don't really have to do much to a mock to make it really stand out and have some sort of unique selling point to it, you know. These tentacles on the back here, a little tiny addition, not using a lot of pieces, and yet it does a lot for the mock and makes it really stand out from uh, the norm of just, you know, your typical normal Hero Factory guy. He's, uh, Dylan's here has uh, added something unique to it and made it uh, even cooler than it uh, originally was. Very nicely done. On to the next mock. This is a mock by... Electro Dragon! And this is uh, his self mock, actually, which is Electro and his Titan Strike armor. Another guitar riff for you. There you go. So I love the idea of multiple forms of a mock. You know, that is <laughs> a little behind the scenes here. I am actually planning that with my self mock. I do want to give him a few different forms depending on. Uh, where he was in his story, uh, just because I think that'd be a fun thing to do. And honestly, I'm, you know, I, I understand that the current form of Kossi could use uh, some upgrades, but eh, I really like how he looks. And kind of at the time I built him uh, was a was a was a good time in my life. And it's that thing of like I like having him alive just to kind of represent where I was then and where I am now. And um, that that to me is really cool. And so it's that idea of I want to keep him built like he is currently, but I do want to upgrade him. But I don't want to take apart the one I've currently got, so why not build a different form for him? So I know one thing that I'm planning on doing is uh, kind of giving him more of a sort of Iron Man style suit, sort of like big old Gatling guns on his shoulders. I guess it's more like War Machine if he's got a big Gatling gun on his shoulder, but you know, kind of more like he's got this sort of power armor on or something, and I was thinking as well, like adding a bit of gold onto him or something, but uh, now I'm talking about my stuff, and I shouldn't be. I want to be talking about 
Electro Dragons. But I like that idea, right? Of of taking a mock that you currently have and giving it different forms. Whether whether you have to take apart that mock to do it or not, it's up to you. But you know, you, you look at the Marvel movies, right? You know, specifically sp- focusing on uh, Spider Man, for example. You've got uh, the homemade suit. You've got his Stark suit, which is sort of his staple traditional suit. Then you've got the Iron Spider suit. Then you've got the Stealth suit, and I'm sure. You know, by the time I'm recording this episode, Marvel will have announced even more suits for him to have, and I may have even forgotten some already. And heck, you look at the comics, he's got even more suits. Uh, so that kind of cool thing of, you know, sticking with the original thing, but changing up the forms a little bit, you know, f- mixing around some of the colors, giving him some funky tentacles on the back or something different, you know, just, just finding interesting ways of playing with a concept that you've already done. Because it's that thing of like, you know, who says that once you've done something once, it doesn't mean you can't do it again and play around with it in new and interesting ways, right? You know? Why not uh, take a concept you're already good at and stretch it and move it around and see what it does if you do this to it or do that to it and kind of experiment with it in some ways because you never know what you might come up with. And I think this mock to some degree kind of focuses on that. You know, here's your, your typical base sort of uh, little Hero Factory guy here using very much, you know, your typical uh, Hero Factory 2.0 sort of look uh, with the CCBS pieces and everything. And again, mixing around some of those colors there from all the different guys. You know, I believe blue was on Stormer. And uh, for the core and the the mask there, uh, well, the head rather, and then the mask and everything else on the body is red from Ferno, and then there's a little bit of black thrown in there as well. So again, mixing and matching around, having fun doing that with the the typical base uh, style of Hero Factory 2.0 heroes there. And then, yeah, expanding on that even further and making this big old huge Titan mech version of him. Such a cool idea and a, a great way of really playing with that concept more. And that's another thing too, Hero Factory was cool because they recycled the same characters a lot. And sure, they'd introduce some new ones, like by... Uh, you know, eventually we got, like, you know, Rocco and some of the other guys, and, uh, you know, Nex and Evo were slowly introduced as uh, things went on, and that was always really cool. But it was also nice it always being the case of, like, hey, here's my buddy Ferno, he's around again, or here's another version of uh, Stormer or something like that. That was always cool, especially when you got, like, XLs of some of those guys. That was always cool as well. And that's the thing, because each wave was so vastly different, you often got the same kind of mask, but in different styles. So here, of course, that's Ferno 2.0's head, but then there's the Ferno XL head from some of the later themes. And again, all Ferno's head, you even have the original Ferno head, you have the Ferno 3.0 head, which is more eagle-shaped and stuff like that. You know, maybe you want to make a mock that uses all the different styles of the Ferno head, uh, and this is just your mock, but in different forms. You know, maybe this is his uh, stealth armor, and this is his jungle armor, and this is his Arctic Explorer armor, and this is his underwater armor and uh, other cool interesting stuff like that right like that's such a a fun thing to do and uh, a great way of expanding on characters you've already made so that could be a cool inspiration point for you you know might even fit in with your story if you've uh, if you've got one for your for your sets and your mocks and everything but uh, focusing on the titan guy here because i'm talking more about the concept than the actual build here love the electro weapon that he's got here kind of just i don't know it looks really cool because it looks like lightning's kind of coursing up and down his arm like that kind of like uh you know, uh, Star Killer from uh, the old Force Unleashed video game there, how Force Lightning would just ooze up his arm like that. Kind of reminds me of that, kind of makes him look really powerful and cool, this big old mech here, I quite like it. Or not so much mech, this is more of a uh, suit of armor rather, but you know, still, looks great. And I also like the fact that there is just Trans Blue introduced uh, throughout this uh, larger scaled up version, and there's also all these wires and things being interdispersed throughout it, kind of... Yeah, it gives it this look of this thing is way more powerful, it possibly has different abilities to it, you know, maybe it has a bit more control over electricity that his uh, original form doesn't, and, uh, you know, it kind of also gives it the fact that this is probably a, a constructed suit of armor, so it's got these, you know, wires and things, and the trans blue is sort of the power coursing through it so the suit can actually work, so it's been powered or something, you know. It's a cool idea, I quite like that a lot. Let us move on to the next muck, and this is a muck by Selhox. And this is his self mock named Obsidian. Again, I don't know if this is specifically a Hero Factory mock, he didn't actually say, but still looks very similar to good old Von Nebula from the original wave of Hero Factory. One of the coolest villains. I was uh, actually quite liked him a lot. Really fun design and uh, just a cool character. So I love all the tubes and barrels kind of going all around this mock here, specifically when you look at the back here. It just looks super cool. Kind of gives it this real sort of. I don't know, just a very interesting look to it, very unique. I, I, You know, you do see mocks that use, you know, barrels and tubes and things, but this one uses a lot of them too, and I, I really like that. kind of gives it this look that, you know, maybe he's suffered a lot of damage or something, and so now he's got all these tubes and barrels that's kind of like a life support system for him, or, you know, maybe it's the way that his powers work, that it sort of has to feed through this machine that's on his body or something. I don't know, I'm starting to get a bit of a story uh, 
the more I look at this mock and I quite like that. So I think that's a, a fun addition to the mock for sure. And I also like, you know, kind of the more you look through this mock, you can see these legs are very similar to the original Von Nebula, as are the arms and stuff like that. So I like that this guy here has taken the kind of base Von Nebula frame, but really expanded upon it in some way. So sort of adding even more spikes to him and kind of moving the location of the spikes and, you know, buffing out the torso a bit, giving him a new weapon, the barrels, the cape, a few little additions like that playing around with it a bit, adding some things, taking some stuff off, all that sort of thing. And as a result, you get a, your own cool mock. You're kind of riffing off of uh, what the set had there, but making it your own and having fun doing so. And I like that. That's a, a great way to approach a mock, whether that's with, you know, an actual set that you're kind of uh, riffing off of and expanding upon, or, you know, a mock or something, whether it's one of your own mocks or someone else's, you know, kind of taking a lot of inspiration from what they've done, but then personalizing it and making it your own. So you're not just straight up copying someone. You are... Uh, taking things that you like from that and going, actually, you know what, I could do that myself. It's kind of like the, the difference between maybe an iPhone or a Samsung or something, how, you know, there are things that are similar, but they are vastly different and they kind of make stuff their own or they have things that are a bit exclusive that the other one doesn't or they do things a little better or a little worse than the other, you know, but either way, it's been made their own and it's their own unique item or product or mock in this example here. So it's kind of a cool idea. So nice work. Let's move on to the next mock by Eo Okananana and is called Crab Beast. So of course we had the hero factory, but there was also was it canon in the story that there was a villain factory? Was there a, was there a bad guy team who made villains, or were villains just like existing in that world? I don't remember. But besides the point, of course, you have your heroes. You got to have your villains to fight them. So maybe you want to build your own custom hero factory villain. And one of the things I really liked about the hero factory villains is they all kind of very much they, they had uh, very very different names. Your typical Makuta from Bionicle. You know, you had like uh, Explode. You had Thunder. You had Von Nebula and you know, stuff like that. But all of their names very much focused off of the one thing that they had. You know, for example, Toxic Reaper. He was a sort of acid villain, very much fitting with that name. Then you had Rotor, who was a sort of wind style villain. You know, his weapons and the big old Rotor on his back there were very wind themed and also kind of like gas themed as well to some degree and his mask kind of looked a bit uh, like that as well so i liked the fact that a lot of the villains had very kind of base names similar to transformers to some degree and a lot of their sort of unique thing was based off of that or their look was based off of that and this mock kind of uh, reflects that to some degree you know of course uh, this guy being crab beast he kind of resembles some kind of kind of little aspects of a crab as well as just sort of general sort of underwater sea creatures and stuff like that so he's used in a very very awesome piece use these big old dinosaur pieces here as little claws for his little crab hands and that's a great piece use because those pieces are huge cumbersome and can be a little difficult to use but you know that's the awesome thing about lego just because uh, you know one person might go good luck using those in a mock another person will be like you have much more to learn i'm gonna use these in my mock and do it in a great way and here comes aoa kanonan doing exactly that so i really like that aesthetic there big old clawed arm things here kind of being used as weapons and just really helps with the look of this character and again you know crab beast kind of very much fits that name there very much a, a sort of staple to your typical like hero factory villain there of uh, everything sort of working together like that and also using that baraki head there that uh, is karapa's head but is recolored uh, and was on one of the uh, system play sets i like the fact that he is actually riffing off of the Baraki look which was that sort of underwater sea creature look to it and again that's the aesthetic he's going for so a very clever idea to use those parts that uh, were of course made to look like that it's a great idea so yeah some really clever stuff going on here really nice work let's move on to the final mock in this episode and this is a mock by the black cat and is called thunder 3.0 there's a lot to love about this revamp of the typical uh or one of the first wave of villains here which was thunder i love the awesome additions that he's done to the weapon here it being this very large uh sort of uh, almost sort of gun object here that uh, is very similar to the original weapons that uh, Thunder had, you know, kind of having that three prong kind of thing there. But uh, yeah, expanding on upon it a bit, actually removing it from the body and playing around with it a bit and just seeing what he can do with it. I think it looks great and really fits this new look that this mock has. And you also love the shoulder design of this too, using the Hydraxon masks there, as well as adding some of those Nuva shoulders to the side, really creates some beautiful looking shoulder armor there. Really, really complements the mock and looks fantastic. And man, I love it when people use uh, masks on shoulders on a mock. It just looks really good. And it's just a great way of using masks that maybe you don't actually want to use as masks. It's uh, just a great use for them. 
Looks really cool on this mock especially. And speaking of uh, kind of around that general area on the mock, uh, that middle bit on the torso there is actually a Galador piece. So again, awesome to see some pieces being used in some funky ways that they weren't intended. And you know, Galador, there's always some obscure, weird pieces from that theme. So always great to see them being used on a Bionicle mock here. And uh, this is a, a brilliant example of uh, that piece being used on a mock very effectively. Also, this uh, digigrade leg design here on the mock is fantastic to see and really fits with the character, especially with this look that he's going for. And then the final thing I want to discuss on this mock that I really, really like is these spikes here on his back. Just a great way of sort of adding a, a little something more to the mock and... You know, typically you think, okay, what what could come out of the back? Maybe wings or something like that, but uh, maybe wings wouldn't really work for this character. So I like the idea of just sort of, you know, just putting some blades on the back there to kind of form this sort of back crest with these spikes on it. I think it looks super, super cool. And again, really fits with the character and the look that he's... Uh, aiming to achieve here. So that was some Hero Factory mocks in this Hero Factory themed episode of not quite the Bionicle Inspiration series, but in fact, the Bionicle Inspiration series. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you want some of your own mocks featured on the show, here's how to do so. You will see currently on your screen an email. If you send me some links or some pictures and some general information about your mock to that email, I'll add it to the list and one day it'll be featured on the show. I actually had a fair few submissions in this episode of the show as well. So uh, there you go. Otherwise, be sure to check the links in the description to the mocks that are featured in this episode and check out some of the other stuff these guys have done. They're great builders and they deserve a bit of love. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. See you in the next one.